Okay, hello and welcome to Biobeats Live. I'm Nikki Hemmings, lead psychologist at Biobeats. Now we are very lucky today to have Kevin Green with us. So Kevin is ex-chief executive of the Recruitment and Employment Confederation. He's also ex-HR director at Royal Mail during a large transformation that they went, to, uh, went through. And he's author, also author of the best-selling business book, Competitive People Strategy. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today and it's great to have you. I'm delighted to be here. Fantastic. Um, so since our last Biobeats uh, live session, we've had um, a lot of HR leaders um, from a mix of different industries emailing with us with their questions. So what we're going to do is pick three um, to discuss today. So Kevin, are you okay if I, if I just quickly jump in and yeah, start with um, one of these questions? So the first one that I've got for you is, what should HR leaders be focusing on at this moment in time? I think there's two things actually, and they may not seem compatible, but I think it's quite important, and that's the role of HR. One is very much working as part of a business leader in terms of the survival of the business. So, you know, most businesses have given up with profit PL and focusing on cash and liquidity. Uh, but within that, clearly, most organizations, 60 to 70% of their cost base will be people. So, clearly, organizations are making some tough calls around furloughing people, uh, reducing salaries, thinking about different ways in which people are working. So the HR community really need to focus on helping the business make some right decisions in relation to that. Mm -hmm. And on the second, on the other side of it, they need to support people. You know, you know, these are human beings going through a really difficult process. Um, and so again, they need to support managers and the workforce in first of all understanding what's going on so there's a lot about communication but secondly there's also about just different ways of working and supporting people through this kind of transition process so a bit about the business and then quite a bit about just helping human beings go through this sort of unprecedented period yeah i really like that the sort of the practical considerations of how are we keeping everything going but actually reminding ourselves that these are humans this is sort of unprecedented yeah. times how are we how are we working this out? And I really like the fact you mentioned about communication, um, you know, working out, communicating it and, and, and working out together. I really like that. Thank you. So on to our next question. How should managers be engaging their people as they work from home? Well, I think we've picked up on what the, uh, the starting point, which is, you know, the first thing is that people are going to have concerns about their livelihood. So again, communication and clarity about how they're going to be treated, whether they're going to earn less money, what hours they're going to work. So being clear about the expectation, I think, is really, really important right up front. Uh, then secondly, again, I think you've got to help people adapt to the new working environment. We need managers to set some precedents about how things are going to happen, how often there's going to be meetings, one-to-ones, the whole thing. But again, I think managers have got a responsibility not just to manage the tasks, but to manage the people. And I think it's important to recognise this is a health, you know, it's a pandemic. So people could be worried about family members. They could have children at home. They're going to be working in a different way, not connected with their workforce. So I think it's right that managers are aware that people might feel isolated and lonely. Um, and I think they just need to make sure through things like checking in at meetings and get, getting people to give a score between one and five about how they're feeling that people have got the opportunity to say what's going on for them. And uh, as a manager, you know, if someone does say, you know, this is a really bad day, I'm really not feeling great, then it's a, their responsibility to pick that up and find a way of dealing with it, whether it's to help, you know, go direct to business support services that the company may have or talking to HR about how do we support this individual. Nice. Thank you, Kevin. There's a couple of things that um, I really liked uh, that you, you mentioned there. Again, picking up about the, the communication, helping people adapt and being very clear about expectations. So how often they're having meetings, when they're having meetings. Yeah. I think whenever things, everything's changed and it's getting back into these routines um, and new routines and having these sort of time points and, and knowing when you're checking in is really important. But also, I think one of those points is that understanding people um, are people and they have stuff going on outside of outside of their work and this is very much apparent um, uh, at the moment and it's sort of juggling that and, and recognizing that um, is a is a really great point. I, mean, I had a meeting today with a, a, a senior HR and she had her two children one was on the lap <laughs> the other 
running around in the background. <laughs> yeah. I think it, you know, there were some real challenges in, yeah. in working in this environment. And yeah. I do think this whole thing about working remotely is in some ways, you know, there's a lot of data that shows that, you know, 80% of people like working remotely if there's clarity about expectations and communications and, and people can feel more trusted. You know, a lot of people feel more trusted by the organisation because they're being left alone to get on with it. But it's got to be done in the right way. Yeah, and I like that. And I think the trust also comes down to expectations. What, when are you meant to be available? At what point? And what are you delivering? And then yeah. everything else that can be chaos. <laughs> you've got kids and dogs running around but you know what needs to be done and you know you know at what time so no I, th I think that's um i think that's a fantastic point and also you mentioned about a scoring system yeah, it's actually very hard to talk about so tell me about that in the meetings i'm a great believer in asking everyone to go around the table or to to go uh, around the team and just say how are you feeling you know five's the your best day of your life you know you're you're flying one is it's you know a terrible day and you're having a, a, an awful time and I think you know if you do that you you know most people will be somewhere in the middle most of the time mm. but occasionally you'll get someone that goes you know I'm a one or I'm a two and and I think what you've then got to do as a manager is you've got to you know double back after the group conversation and just sort of check in with people and go what is going on how can I help mm. and if they you know if they agree that it, you know someone's struggling then clearly you know referral to hr if they've got some kind of coaching or welfare support then clearly there may be um, some help available that you know you want to give to people because what you want to do is to support them particularly and you want to capture these things early before they become absences or you know people really struggling to do their work exactly a very preventative approach and i like that scoring that we've previously used um instead of mentioning stress or how you're feeling, which can be quite hard for people, it's what's your energy like today? Yeah. And you can say, you know, cool, I'm a, I'm a one or a five. And then like I said, that really important checking back in with them, following them up as a manager, being that point of, of escalation or just asking if they need an extra chat. And the, actual, the other thing to remember is at the beginning of this process, managers have got to be open and transparent. They've yeah. got to say, I'm a two. I've had a crap. I've had, yeah. I've had <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And role modeling those behaviours as well. Yeah, you uh, said yeah. you? exactly. No, I, I think that's a fantastic point. Um, and relating to that, so the third question I have for you is what should HR um, and managers keep an eye out for in relation to people's mental health? Well, I, I think we sort of touched on some of it. I think, I think one of it is you don't want to let people sort of get left behind. And I think, you know, when people are working remotely, you haven't got the, the you know, the physical connection with your people if you work in an office you see people every day you might see your team in and out all day and you'll pick up on body language of how people are behaving and what they're doing and how they're saying and how they're interacting with others you're most probably going to lose that mm. so in some ways i think you know some of the things we said you've got to check in with people more regularly you've got to find these sort of mechanisms that we talked about with the scoring um, but I think you've just got to be a bit more attuned to it. You've just got to be a little bit more thoughtful that the, you know, this is a unprecedented. People are going through, you know, they're worried about their shopping. They're worried about getting food. They may have, have someone in the house self-isolating. They're worried about, you know, paying the bills. You know, this is a, you know, it's a, you know, you couldn't create more of an environment where there were going to be people feeling quite stressed and quite finding life quite difficult. So I think, you know, as a manager, you've just got to find opportunities to pick up on that and then try and support people and deal with it. Yeah. And you mentioned about having these, these, these check-ins, these, these connections, these meetings, because as you said that we don't have those social cues anymore, no. we don't see everyone getting up and, and going to lunch um, or we don't see someone coming in a bit late and looking a bit tired. So having those those one to one meetings where you can see and video calls as well, like we are now, where you can see see people and um, sort of check in with them. That's um, I do think that one of the things for HR is they should be thinking about giving some managers, you know, quick, sharp little interventions about how to pick up and perhaps ask questions. You're not you're not feel, looking yourself today. You seem a bit tired or it doesn't matter what it is, but it's just showing you care for the individual, but giving people the opportunity just to give you some signals about how they're feeling and what's going on for them. Yeah, I'd say that was that's most important, helping people give those signals across and then you can you can take it from there. Fantastic. So um, I've actually got a surprise question for you. I know you said there was three, 
but we've we've talked about managers but how about the people managing the managers so what are your tips um, to uh, CEOs or MDs during this crisis well I think there's two one is I think they've got to focus on the long term as well as the short term and and I say that as a business person really because I think there's so much time and attention of surviving and making tough decisions and reducing expenditure and furloughing people and getting loans from the government and all of that that you know they, that's a short-term activity we've got to be thinking how does the business pan out in the next three to six months and you need to make sure that you've got some people working on that so that's the business side of it yeah. on the human side i think the first thing is they're going to look after themselves you know they're leaders they are under um you know, they're, they're, they're operating in hugely stressful environments. You know, they will have shareholders, they'll have government, they'll have the media, they'll have their reputation and all of that. And, you know, people take this seriously. I think most leaders do take that, you know, I'm, I'm in charge of 100,000 people and their livelihoods and their families. So, you know, I think there's huge pressure. So I think they need to think about sleep, fresh air, exercise eating well now there's no great surprise so <laughs> all the things you, you sort of yeah, do the things <laughs> you know you do. but i do think it's about as a team just sort of having those conversations again you know a leadership team saying and they're going to be working long hours and long days i suspect so yeah. making sure they just have the opportunity and they ask each other how they're doing and just encourage people to go for a walk to just you know send people home sometimes we, you know we've been working flat out for the last four days let's just you know finish early tonight or mm. actually come in late tomorrow all sorts of things which just show one you're respectful two you say to people what you're doing and how you're managing yourself so you can perform under uh, quite difficult circumstances so it gives others the legitimacy to say can I come in tomorrow I've got to look after the kids or I've got to do this or whatever it may be so I think there's a bit about recognizing you're managing human beings and human beings in times of stress um, behave quite differently and you just need to be able to think about yourself and your colleagues um, and just bring that to the front of your mind on a more regular basis yeah I like that role modeling that behavior even if it's going outside for a walk taking calls when you're when you're outside if that's still a, um, a possibility where you are um, and yeah. it holds you to account if you're not doing it <laughs> then no one else is going to do it so make sure you look after yourself so you can best help okay. others you know a week and a half ago i had some md a chief exec of one of the businesses i'm on the board and an md of another who were really in a awful place making wanting to make tough decisions about the business yeah. and there was two things i said to them one is go for a walk get some fresh air you know and calm down to be honest and and then make a provisional decision but sleep on it i'm a great believer in getting people just to spend a bit of time you know make the decision the following day and the other thing is listen to your colleagues have open conversation really listen to what people are saying because sometimes people get quite myopic when they're under pressure you know they focus on just what's in front of them and sometimes you want to just give yourself a bit of space and a bit of time get inputs from other people because you don't want to make poor decisions and then spend a lot of time repenting that you made the wrong call. Yeah, I like that, taking the time. Here's the analogy, you need some breathing space, but actually breathing is incredibly important. And during yeah. these times, you know, we, we sometimes do forget to do that. So okay. take a deep breath, sleep on it and look after yourself. I like that. Well, I'm, I'm so sorry, Kevin. It's been great chatting to you, but we've, we've run out of time. So thank you very much for joining us on today's uh, Live by Beat session and sharing all of your knowledge and experience with the, the community as well. It's fantastic to, to hear some of your, the, your snippets from what you've been up to. Um, if people would like to hear a bit, little bit more about what you've um, been doing, um, where's the best place to find um, information? I think social media, so I'd point people to LinkedIn and to Twitter. I'm sort of active on both. Okay, excellent. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll link your, your LinkedIn and Twitter in, in some of the, the show notes as well. Thank you so much. Um, and if you're listening to this session and have any questions for Kevin or for Biobeats, please do get in touch. Um, and also let us know what you'd like to see featured on our next Biobeats Live. So this is every Friday at 10am. Okay, stay safe, Biobeats community, and I'll see you again soon.